Yes, that is a puddle of water. We had a surprise 10 millimeters of rain yesterday. Well, g'day everyone, happy Easter. It is Easter Monday and welcome back to the farm. So yeah, we managed to get under some thunderstorms yesterday. Very unexpected. There was zero millimeters on the forecast yesterday, but there was a 20% chance of a shower of rain in the north. And yeah, we just got lucky. We got under one about 10 millimeters at home, probably a little bit more there at the new block. Dad was there yesterday when it rained, he said it really came down. So uh, we're just picking up the uh, tractor and the, load, uh, the loader and the spreader there. Now we're gonna bring that back home because we wanna get spreading a bit of snail bait now, I think. Bit of moisture around, that should get the snails on the move. They're hungry, they're looking for food. They wanna come down and lay their eggs around this time of the year, so it's the perfect opportunity to get some snail bait out and try and get a really good kill on them. So we got our snail bait on the trailer here. I think why well, Dad's coming back because obviously we need a loader to lift this into the spreader, but the spreader's on the back of the main loader, but I wonder if I can go get the old double five four fired up and uh, maybe we can use that instead that way we don't won't have to disconnect the uh the uh, john deere from the spreader so we'll run over there and see whether it'll fire up it's been a while so look i think it's got a pretty new battery in it but it's been a long time since it's been fired up i think so might have my back up against the wall i reckon oh yeah she's been a while let's see if we've got any juice in her She might run, she might run, but I think I'll squirt a bit of aero start into it, see if that'll help it along. Maybe we'll get this thing fired up. There's not a lot left in there. completely sunny when we were driving over to get that loader 15 minutes ago that has come in real quick that cloud The old girl doesn't have very good brakes, so it's a bit hard to get up this ramp. <laughs> Must have been running like that for quite a while. What, that tyre like that? Yeah. Oh, you reckon? No, oh, it's totally destroyed it on the inside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Mmm. Well, the old tyre on the spreader has seen better days. <laughs> That's absolutely stuffed, but luckily uh, when we're spreading snail bait, we actually change over to a bigger tire because we need to get the rate down super, super low. I think it's only, is it five or 10 kilos per hectare? Can't remember, I need to have a look in the book, but uh, it's a very low rate that you put that stuff out at. So we put a bigger drive tire on there so that it slows it down more than uh, what that tire can do. But yeah, this is looking like really ideal snail bait spreading weather. It's nice and cloudy and gloomy and uh, it's damp. So the snails should be on the move. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it has to be able to pull it back further, so... Hmm. Yeah, I've got a short and change at the front.
You won't have to loosen them too much. Alright, we've got our bigger drive wheel on, we've swapped our chains over, we've set our back door, this belt, the main belt uh, that distributes the product down to the spreaders, that looked a little bit sort of floppy underneath, so we uh, gave that a bit of a nip up as well, grease the spinners, we should be good to go, and it's absolutely ideal out here, you couldn't get a better day for spreading snail bait, it's a bit of sort of misty, foggy, gloomy stuff, and sitting on 10 millimetres of rain, should be a good thing. Starting in the bean stubbles out the back of the house, if you saw during harvest time, uh, we had quite a few snails in these two paddocks, so yeah, I'm gonna have to come along and do a pretty good bait in all of the, like, we'll do the whole paddock here. Some of the other stuff we're gonna do, we're just gonna do some boundary laps around paddocks because the snails like hanging around near the fence posts in the summer, they get up the fence posts away from the heat of the ground. But unfortunately with these ones, we're gonna just have to do the whole lot. So yeah, we are kind of shooting for that five to 10 kilos a hectare on the snail bait. Obviously a spreader like this without scales, it's virtually impossible to know exactly, but we got some settings that we go by and if we're in that range somewhere, that'll be about as good as we can do. So yeah, it is really weird spreading this stuff because it's not like you can see anything behind you coming out. You have to really get out and search around for this stuff because you got to think like five kilos per hectare is not a lot. And you think, you almost feel like, why are we doing this? It almost feels useless, but it does a really good job. Like, yeah, we, every year we do it, if we've had a bad spot and you spread it, it, it really does a number on the snow. So uh, it's definitely worth it. Right, so here we go. We got some snails here. Oh yeah, he's even out of his shell, the little bugger. But typically they like to hide up off the ground on a stem, on a fence post like that when it's hot. And uh, they come down now, we've had a little bit of rain, a little bit of moisture, they're looking for something to eat. So they crawl along and uh, what do we got there? A little snail bait right there. So he'll come crawling along now, there's a bit of moisture around and uh, yum. <laughs> Hopefully you'll eat that and die. I've done my first outside lap, so I thought I'd better get out and have a look and see what was going on back there. I think we should be putting 20 out, which is good. Man, this is going to be horrible. You can't win no matter what way you go in here. This way I'm going across the sprayer marks and the furrows. The other way I'm going across the header wheel marks. It's just going to be a rough ride, so sit back and enjoy it. <laughs> But yeah, I had a good look behind. There's plenty going out, I think. So we'll just leave everything as it is and we'll get through this 40 hectares and we'll have a peek in the back and see how much uh, we've gone through. the first two paddocks done or the two bad paddocks done and we are just about out of snail bait I think we're gonna have to have a fill up before we keep going So we've thrown another bag in. Uh, there's one more bean paddock that I want to spread the whole paddock. So 
what we might do, the canolas right here next door, we might chuck a couple of laps around the outside of that paddock and use that as an excuse to get up to the bean paddock. So we'll go up through the canola and we'll spread the outside laps of that on the way and then we'll do that bean paddock and that should be the worst, almost the worst of the worst done then and I think uh, Dad might jump in after that and have a bit of a go for a while. Uh, yeah, he might go to a few fence lines and there's one more hilltop that we tend to struggle with uh, snails at, from time to time, so we'll go and do that one as well. I think that's our resident hare. It must live in like, all the trees and that that we got, like that we planted in through here. It just always seems to be down around here, whether it's on the road or wherever, but it always jumps out always runs away and then the next time you come back it's pretty much in the same spot <laughs> well as quickly as the cloud blew over it has gone it has moved through and uh look at that clear sunny skies out to the west so anyway i was hoping that was going to hang around all day just to keep a bit of moisture around but uh not to be by the looks of it all right I think I'm gonna check out of the tractor and Dad might check in. Well, I would say good morning to you all, but we are well and truly past that at the moment because I had a couple of jobs to do in the office this morning for the bank and then Stacy went out with the kids, so it was nice and quiet in the house. And I thought, well, it's the start of April, so the first quarter of 2024 is behind us. I'm gonna sit down and do my quarterly bath. So I got that all done and dusted, all wrapped up. And uh, that's uh, another job off the list. And there is this marvellous feeling of snail baiting validation this morning because another three millimetres of rain overnight, super damp. Those slippery little buggers would have been out slurping up that snail bait all night, hopefully. It's always nice when a plan comes together. So I think what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get prepared to put this wheel motor back on the sprayer. But I've got to do a few things to get organised first. I don't know that I'll get too far with it this afternoon. I'm going to get some new... Lock nuts, nylon lock nuts here for these bolts. Um, I just rather put new ones on, make sure that when those bolts get done up, they're gonna stay done up. So I gotta get that. I have gotta get some new spring washers here for these bolts. Uh, these, some of those are absolutely stuffed. They hold on some of the oil fittings. I'm gonna have to run over to Bullaroo. They told me they got these O-rings in stock over there. That's just one of the main oil fittings. For, uh, for the wheel motor, so I just got to do a whole heap of little bits and pieces like that. We'll get the snail bait out the back of the ute and the trailer off and all those sorts of things get organised and try and get this thing back on here because I don't have the rim back for it, but uh, once I get the wheel motor sitting back on there, that's, you know, that's the hard bit done. So we'll focus on getting that done. Easy stuff has been acquired. And the nuts and washes are in there. Now I'm gonna have to go fetch my O-rings. Another successful mission. We'll turn around and head back home. There she is, hey? Looking all shiny and new pretty much, isn't it? Graham is absolutely flat out in there reconditioning the bucket for the Louis Yong. What are you doing? What are you guys barking at out there, huh? What are you doing? What are you guys barking at out there? Hmm? Thank you. 
might just get you to give me a hand because I just need to get the back side up. Yeah. And in. Should move that bucket of oil before I drop something in. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, is it there for a reason? <laughs> Might just uh, gently tighten these up and then you know, we should be able to just drop the weight off of it. Everything on this machine gets anti seize, no questions asked. She is on there now, you absolute ripper. A uh, couple of oil lines there. I think there's five back in here. These top ones here are a bit fiddly to get back in there, but I got some new bolts for those flanges because a few of those are a bit rusty and crappy and should go back together a lot nicer than it came apart anyway. Uh, won't be all corroded and rusty and horrible in there. So I uh, just need the rim back for this. Hopefully I'll get that back pretty soon. But once we get this thing going again, Flinders Machinery are gonna come out. That's the dealer. There's a... Um, extra or some filters that you put in the oil lines up here somewhere and basically what that does is it just you put those in and then you run the machine for an hour and it's an extra filtration step for the oil it just takes any debris out of the oil lines that might be in there just in case there was actually anything wrong with this and it was um, sending off anything into the oil system so we'll do that just make sure the job's done right and um, yeah it's a good thing Oh, I almost forgot to put tonight's dinner on. You know what they say, hungry kids, hungry wife, big strife. But yeah, that there is some homegrown lamb, ladies and gentlemen. We grow it, we eat it. Right, let's get these oil lines on and put this job behind us. I reckon we could use a bit of lighting back here. It's, it's a little dingy. You guys see, we've got lighting on this set, on the Lock Valley Farm set. Not only have we got lighting, I think was it last episode I got a haircut? We got hair and makeup as well. We got everything here. Now I get to cover my nice new freshly painted wheel motor with oil, which is just lovely. Should be all the fiddly ones done now. Just the easy ones to go. All right, we're down to the last two and they are the easiest ones of them all. So let's throw these on and be done with this damn thing. The million dollar question is, have they moved these fittings? Which I think they might have. Hello. Hello, darling. How are you? What are you doing? I'm fitting a wheel motor. Fitting a wheel motor. That's a lot. It's a big job. Whoa, Dad. Can we go and have a look? Um, um, can we go for that, Mum? Is that all you wanted to come down and just say good day, did you? Good day. Good day. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Rah! <laughs> you eating a banana? I think that's cannibalism. <laughs> you banana? Oh, no, I'm not. I just came to see you off. Oh, I think you'll get so bored. I don't think you want to be putting wheel motors on sprays. Not even I want to be doing that. Yeah, I'll see if there's any ratchet work. Well, I hope that looked nice and quick for you guys because it definitely wasn't for me. She's all on there. Oil lines are connected. Tools are packed away. It's all looking good. We just need our rim back and then uh, we're just about back in action, which is beautiful. So it looks like Dad's just about done with his bucket reconditioning in there he's just hard facing all the wear points or the wear surfaces on that bucket just freshening it all up making sure we can get as much life out of it as possible so once he's done that 
uh, we should be able to get onto spreading gypsum. The weather in the morning looks pretty favourable for a few hours. We'll wait and see. You never really know till you get up. They could say the wind's going to be 10 k's and it'll be 20. You just <laughs> you don't know till you get out in the morning. So we might get this oversized tyre for the snail bait off and the original one back on. That's a, we've got a new tyre for that. That's all ready to go. Grease the spinners. Just get this thing set up ready to go for gypsum again. <laughs> Obviously that wheel is a standard fitment, not modified in any way at all. I thought why well, the wheel's off perfect time to uh, check whether I need to adjust this chain, but luckily from the rate that I need for the gypsum, these are all set right, so I won't have to change anything there, which is nice. All right, folks, I'm gonna go do the family thing now. Just wanted to say thank you to everyone, as always, for watching the videos. We really do appreciate it. If you want to see more videos or you want to support the channel just consider liking and subscribing because that really helps us out you guys have yourselves a good one and until next time see ya